what we just went through. I, I, I love the way God works. So I just kind of bumped into that documentary and I was thinking about uh, last month, we didn't meet every Tuesday, things were going on, COVID, sickness, births, all kinds of things were going on. Um, and so last month was uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. And so of course we as doulas are looking at the, the biggest mental health issue uh, for our folks. So we, we are taking care of uh, pregnant and birthing and postpartum folks. Um, we also wanna bear in mind that depression can start in the pregnancy. And I think one of the number one ways that we see it is the folks who are just won't eat. And I have very often been known to refer to it as suicide by pregnancy. You talk to them, you talk to them, you talk to them. They smile at you with beautiful little faces and then they just continue to refuse to eat. And then, you know, put the, there's, they're in the hands of, of our ridiculous uh, medical industry and you just kind of hold your breath as a doula. They're so grateful when they survive that event. Well, certainly that family needs the, to have eyes on. Uh, sometimes having the baby breaks the spell and suddenly the first person's eating in postpartum but they weren't eating in pregnancy. Very often that baby will come early, one, two, three weeks early because the body is like, uh, actually the baby's like, uh, this is a horrible hotel, the service is horrible, I'm gonna check out early. Um, so not optimum, but the baby has the opportunity to survive being born at 37 weeks, 38 weeks. 39 weeks, not optimum at all. If the baby's small, it might have to do some NICU time. time, um, but they have a possibility that that baby would be fine. Uh, all that being said, we want to really keep an eye on the clients. We want to support the families, talk to the papa or, or, or uh, partner if there is one in the picture. That is one of the reasons why we do the intake that we do in this practice. The intake covers all of this, talks about childhood abuse. And we don't wanna be la putting labels on people. Like, so not everybody who's had a horrible childhood grows up to have all of the, all of the issues that one could have. Based on my childhood, I should be a raving psychopath. So. It's possible <laughs> to have a hideous childhood and, and be somewhat functional. I got my issues, but somewhat functional. Um, but just to keep your eye and, and to send your ancestors to keep an eye on the client who's had a very troubled uh, childhood. Um, for sure, we need to all have resources available within our community at our fingertips. Uh, if we're dealing with clients of color, we want to find out where the therapists of color are and the people who are specifically in tune with, um, with uh, postpartum mood disorders, what that looks like, when help is needed, when is medication a good idea. We want to be aware of the ancestral processes that help folks get back into their bodies after they have their babies and closing of the bone ceremonies and yoni steams and massage and acupuncture and chiropractic. All of those things can be incredibly helpful, but there are people who need medication and we should help our clients to feel comfortable with the fact that they are uh, in need of medication, right? It's a big difference between baby blues, which happens to almost everybody and is temporary, than depression, which is a harder scenario where you see a mom who's not doing things that she used to enjoy, not eating, not bonding with the baby, or being overly concerned about the baby, overly smothering the baby it can be one of those two poles, right? The parent not taking care of herself, not bathing. Hmm? 
psychosis is a whole nother ball of wax. Psychosis is super rare, thank the goddess. However, that's when you have a parent who is, there's something wrong with my baby, or there's something wrong with me, or I am hearing voices telling me, and these voices are never saying anything good. These voices are, you know, they're folks who hear voices, they're folks who talk to ancestors, and those folks are telling them good things. <laughs> Not worried about those people. They're cool. But folks who are saying that the baby is sick, the mom's not, not a good mom. The voice is saying that the baby needs to be dispatched from this world. Or somebody's going to dispatch the baby so the mom's going to kill the baby first. That sort of thing. That is an immediate situation where that mom needs to be refer to mental health services immediately. Do not play go, do not serve herbs, do not, do not, do not. After everybody's all stabilized, then the herbs and other things might be totally helpful. But we want that parent stabilized and safe because when a person is under the grip of a mental disorder like that, the worst thing, they, they don't wanna hurt their baby. They're in a place where that makes sense to them, but that's, that's not what they want in the, if they were in their right mind. And so we're helping to support their white mind. Um, some of you may remember that a few months ago, I had a client who suffered from postpartum psychosis. Um, I definitely shared it in circle. And that was, that was a very, very hard situation because we did everything we could. Um, and the mom was taken to the hospital and the hospital let her out without really treating her. And she went home and hung herself. Fortunately, she did not harm her baby. Um, and her poor grieving partner uh, is being a very sweet and attentive dad right now. Um, and, you know, how someone said in, in the check-in, like, how do, you, how do you, as a doula, deal with that? It's one of those things that we have to be prepared to deal with, either as members of the community or as, as professional caregivers in, in the community, in which we are as doulas. We need to have our own uh, self-care. We need to have our own therapists. We need to have our own massage therapist. We need to have our spiritual practice. We need to have all that we, all those things that just help you deal with life. This interesting thing about this culture, it, teach, it teaches us that these things are just something that happens to somebody else. And so we're all shocked and blown away when it's in our life or a degree away from us or ourselves having a baby going through this stuff. If, if we, uh, and this was said several times in the check-in as well, if we all talked about how this is possible, then we don't have to be shocked about it or ashamed of it. We just go take care of it. We just go get the help we need. We wanna really, really educate papas and, and partners and grandmas, because very often the person who's suffering from this situation doesn't notice anything wrong with her. It feels normal to her. And so the people around that suffering person will have to be, be the ones who will take uh, action. This is why we always ask for an emergency contact that is part of the intake that we take. And we have every right to give a call to say the mother-in-law, whoever the emergency contact person is, Say the dad is not, you've spoken to the dad and he's not getting it. He doesn't feel like he gets it or he's afraid or whatever the situation is. You have a, a, a permission in that form to call the emergency uh, contact person for that family. And you should. And state, you know, I have some concerns. Could you reach out and, you know, 
support your your daughter, daughter-in-law, whatever the situation is. Right? You get to uh, inform the partner that you're going to do that because you have that level of concern. Sometimes that will get him or her engaged more in what's happening. And that'll be good. Nobody wants to think that their partner can do such a thing. There's so much in, in, the, in, the, in the video that we saw. Uh, we're looking at dysfunctional cultural stuff. Uh, she's married to a Hispanic man. And then there's that, that view in that culture. And that, that's not pure Latino culture. It's what that culture has become under colonization and patriarchy, right? Because what's, what, is, what is normal in that culture is that people are living tribally, mommies, grandmas, aunties, everybody's right there. Everybody's watching the new family in their business, <laughs> bringing food and taking care of each other. That's, but that's been broken by this crazy culture, which is just a culture of sickness and death, right? So um, I'm not gonna, I mean, I'm not gonna blame it. I'm, I'm gonna blame it on the, what's happened to that culture where men have been acculturated just to focus on work and you know, their partner suffers because of that. I will give him kudos because he did call her mother. He, he did try. <laughs> he was overwhelmed and he went outside and he called her mother. So he did try. It's interesting hearing too about how uh, the day that the children were, were killed, uh, that the, the couple had been fighting. I would love to know what the fight was about. So, you know, that thing in, in more tribal cultures and big families where everybody's in everybody's business is not a bad thing. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to have loving elder eyes on, a, on a, a couple's struggling. So I've just listed off some of the things that we can do. Um, I do want uh, everybody who saw the video, and um, I believe I will post it in the, in the uh, student portal. Um, I do want us to create a, a listing of folks that we can all reach out to and share. We're all in different uh, neighborhoods. Some of us are here in these space and where some of us are in other places. And so we'll break it down by the states that we are in. Um, and you know, let's see if we can come up with a couple of people in our communities that we know are therapists or psychiatrists, because therapists for postpartum depression and psychiatrists for postpartum psychosis. So two of each, two psychiatrists, two therapists. And uh, I'm gonna list that in the student portal in the next couple of days and just list out those people's names uh, and contact information and websites in the student portal. And then we will make a list out of them. So if we ever need that, we know we have folks we can refer to. So take super, super good care of yourself tonight. If you haven't eaten, make sure you eat well. Have a nice warm bath. Look at funny, lovely things on TV. If you're a TV watcher, put on the soothing angel music, bang your drum, do all those things that, uh, that uplift our hearts. Um, oh, okay, it's not away. So I love you all. Thank you for being here and I look forward to seeing everybody next week. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. It was nice meeting everyone. See you next Thank week. You. Welcome. Felicia, you got down my number, right? Yes, and I went to text you. Give thanks. Thank you. So sorry, can I stay behind and check in with you real quick? Yep.
Hello. 